I'll tee it up on the right so I can see the fairway behind the trees. Just don't hit it in those bunkers again. Don't hit it in the 11th fairway again. And also, don't do the duck hooky cookie in the pond. That's a lot of don't. Instead of cursing or crying, I didn't react as negatively as I normally would. Instead, I just reload and aim at the tree and rip it. I've started teeing it up on the left edge of the tee box, which forces my mind through trickery to promote a draw on my tee shots. And you know what? It works. If you keep having the same results of certain tees, just tee it up in a new place and get a new perspective. It works. You're a crazy bastard, but this is your fourth shot. You've put it on from here with a little draw a few times before. Can we clear the water even with a fade or a straight shot? Yes. There's so much space behind the pin on this hole. Go right edge with a sweeping hook. The lie is helping us with a draw here. Come on, player. Let's tee it up on the extreme right of the box here to see the fairway. Let's bring it over to the left, even a yard or two. Get the mind to trick me into hitting the fairway on this hole, not the fairway of the 10th hole as I usually do. Here's my new technique. This is the decision line. All plans are created and committed to behind this line in the think box. When inside this box, you must find your plan, your shot, your club, your swing, and your commitment. This box requires maximum focus. Can you focus intensely for just 10 seconds? I find my aiming point within two feet of my ball. Then my preparation is done. Once you've committed to the plan, you cross the decision line into the play box. Here, you stop thinking. Your brain has already decided in the thinking box. Now you execute. I even say execute over and over in my head before the shot. If you start thinking, doubting, or fearing inside the play box, you must step back into the think box and reset yourself. Usually I hit a 6 iron here, always forcing it to get there. Forcing it means loss of control, which means ending up in dead ground short or left. Soggy and dank left and we're not getting up and down. Today I'm hitting a comfortable, smooth 5 iron. Finally the ego gets put in its place. I need a draw because this loft setting of 9 degrees isn't going to clear the tree with a fade. I can't attempt a draw because I'm only hitting what I know. Let's try a straight shot with the brand new driver.
a hybrid here would have given me an easy 220 yards and a smarter play because we're not hitting the green in two anyway. Look how wide the fairway is at 230 yards. I was going for the narrowest part of the fairway with the new club which doesn't draw. If there's no chance of hitting a par 5 and 2, just hit the go-to club off the tee and hit a fairway, then plot from there. I want to leave this 100 to 120 yards away from the green for my approach. There's still a chance to hit it close and make a putt. Wedges are starting to work, but will I hit a solid one? So let's hit the 53 degree. Just don't be short. The pin is tight on the front, and a shot short of the green will be tough to get up and down from. Three options here. Bump and run, putt, or lofted pitch. I never play the bump and run and have never been one to putt from the rough, so I have only one option. Loft it up and land it soft. If I was playing on ground that wasn't this soggy, I would run it up. Looks like he is a tree, Jim. Don't hit it into the fairway on the next hole. Fade it off the trees on the left. Just do not go right, player. Please. This is a long hole, and I always think I need to hit a driver here, but the number of doubles I've made here far exceeds the number of pars. It's perfectly reasonable to hit a hybrid or forward here and go for the green with another hybrid or three iron. A bogey here would be good enough, and a par is like a birdie. But ego gets in the way. This is a perfect example of when you should hit what you know and feel. I knew the sweeping draw with the hybrid would be perfect here, but I decided to go for a high fade with the hybrid, a shot which usually ends in me topping the ball. I could clearly visualize the draw, but couldn't see the fade at all. I was fighting my instinct here, and the result was predictable. I tried it again, but this time with my initial idea of a sweeper from the right. The result speaks for itself, I think. Back to my original ball. I had a tight window of trees to hit through. A bump and run would end up in a bunker. I could see a window in the trees about 2 feet by 2 feet, and it was the perfect height for my 53 degree. This shot needed more focus and energy than any other in recent memory. Swing it smooth, get the mind out of the way, and envision the ball soaring through the hole, and it will happen. Here's the sweep I hit with my hybrid with the second ball. Here's the ball I just hit through that tree. Another hole where I let the ego get in the way. I always hit a 6 iron here waiting for that one perfect shot to arrive. I should hit 5 iron to the back edge, thereby removing all hazards short and right. But today, I persisted with ego golf. Easy bunker shot uphill into the grain from a flat lie. I threw my 60 degree in the lake the week before, which was my bunker club. So now I was using the 58 degree, which I wasn't sure about.